Bonus tip, don't eat Jack of the Box tacos to try to make a video. Woo. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Goldstream Outdoors. Today I'm going to give you my top five tips for 3D printed resin molds. Wait, what? Eight now? Eight? Holy crap, you're getting a lot of value out of this video. So if you've watched all my videos in their entirety, you probably already heard some of these tips, but I wanted to kind of put them all into one spot so I can easily stop answering everybody on Facebook. <coughs> oh my God, COVID. Number one, pick the right resin. To me, there's only one resin to use. That's Soraya Tech Sculpt. It has a heat deflection temperature of 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And all that really means is at what point it starts to bow and warp and get all up. And I don't really know too much about the parameters of the heat deflection test. I know it has a specific width of material as well. I've shot lures well above 400 degrees Fahrenheit and not had any deformation in my molds at all. And all my molds are a standard 15 millimeter width on each side. So I think it's even at a thinner material than 15 millimeters that are really starting to deform at that temperature. And you know, it can handle a lot of heat. There are other high temperature resins. Just make sure your heat deflection temperature is above, you know, 300, 320 degrees Fahrenheit. But Soritech Sculpt is what you want. Links below. My number two tip, print it solid. Yes, you can hollow it out. Yes, you'll save some resin. But really what ends up happening is, especially with Soritech Sculpt, it's a brittle material. So if you have a hollow mold and you're trying to smush it together with a vise or even with screws or something, it's probably going to crack and you want your mold to last, right? This mold here, I've shot at least a hundred times. Absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever. This chipping here is from when I dropped it. If it would have been hollow, it could have shattered the whole thing. Not good. Tip number three, print it flat to the build plate and chamfer it, baby. A solid block of resin, even in a small mold, is a lot heavier than most of the things these 3D printers are used to printing. So you want to give it the most support as possible and the best chance of success. And for me, that's printing it flat against the build plate. And you want to chamfer your edges, right? Put an angle on them in Fusion 360 or whatever, or whatever you're using to design. That'll help you get it off the build plate and it also compensates for the elephant's foot that you're going to get when you print something flat on the build plate, right? Elephant's foot is when you overexpose resin, the light leaks out to the side and your material hardens at the edges wider than the actual model is. And so if you, if you do that flat without a chamfer, when you go to put them together, you're gonna have this lip here and you're gonna have to sand it. Nobody likes sanding. So by chamfering it, you kind of give room for that elephant's foot to go into place. And when you put them together, it's flat. No sanding required. Tip number four is related to tip number three in that you want to print it at the skinniest edge to the build plate. So a lot of people think when I say flat against the build plate, I mean like this, you know, this side flat against the build plate. And that is really destined to fail. You have tons of surface area here on your FEP and it leads to peeling on the edges because that's a lot of pull force. Sometimes you can get away with this edge on the build plate, but I tend to notice that the edges here will pull off. Uh, you can still usually use those molds, but the holes will deform slightly here, but usually your mold is good. The absolute best way to print it is this way. Now, the downside to printing it this way with this side right on the build plate is it is the longest print time possible, right? Print time is largely determined by the number of layers you have on the z-axis. So this is the shortest print time. I could print this mold in probably 40 minutes on my e-packs like this. It would fail, but I could print it. Uh, it would probably be about six hours this way and about 11 hours this way. But this way is going to get me a print pretty much every time that's flawless. And one thing to think about is I can print probably two or three of these molds this way on the build plate just by stacking them back and forth like this. So longest print time, best results, smallest edge onto the build plate. Oh, and one more quick thing. This mold is a little bit tricky because it has the ejection port on the side, but if you have a mold 
in general, you want to put the injection port at the bottom. That's going to give you the cleanest print on that injection port. All right, tip number five. Don't use kind of holes and keys for alignment. Use nuts and bolts, right? So here's my fiddle fin mold here. I have holes going all the way through it. I have probably too many holes here, but hey, more holes the merrier. And quarter 20 nut slides through, boom. For the quarter 20s, I use these wing nuts with washers on them. Screw it down and boom, I'm aligned. Now I need another one on this end, right? But really just two or three points and you're totally aligned. I can put this in my vise with my vise across the bottom there and I'm ready to shoot. So don't use those, I don't even know what they're called, like, um, oh geez. Duh. Keys, you know, or I have the points again, I got a hole on the other end. And the reason why I don't recommend those is generally resin is not accurate enough for you to take, you know, infusion and kind of move a key across, cut a hole. You'll need to make that hole bigger on the other side. And it's gonna depend on resin, it's gonna depend on exposure, and it's not very consistent, right? With a hole, you get relatively consistent results, at least enough for a nut and a bolt. In Fusion, you use the, uh, use the clearance uh, setting in the hole, and it, it generally works just fine with no, no, no issues whatsoever, other than talking, I can't talk. All right, we got a bonus tip here, venting. Now I had some other videos where I didn't vent at all and that does seem to work fairly well. But if you do decide you want to vent, only vent one side of the mold, not both. I learned this on a Facebook group from a guy who does CNC mold and I use that technique on my latest, you know, big saltwater eight inch grub I'm making over here. And it seems to work really, really well. So what I do in Fusion is literally turn off one side of the mold, draw lines where I want the vent holes to be, use the pipe command, and just kind of carve only that one side of the mold. And it seems to work really, really well. What is that in your ear? You got something? Oh, it's a like button, bro. Smash it. All right, let's talk a few top secret numbers here real quick as a bonus. Injection port size. I use 15.2 millimeters, uh, again, to kind of make room in there. I use the hole command and I use the counter bore. So what that does is the 15.2 size goes down a bit and then I can shrink my sprue hole to the, the size that I want to fit my bait, right? And that can be totally dependent on what size bait you have that allows me to not kind of blow away the face of the bait and makes it a lot easier. I also use the drill point tip so I can, it has a cone on the end there and I can kind of just poke that into the front of my bait just enough to get the plastic in there. Then for the vents, I use the pipe command and my pipe di diameter is 0.2 millimeters, which ends up, cause you're only gonna use half of it, right? Really ends up being a 0.1 millimeter which is two layer lines on my printer. Just enough to let the air out and not enough to let the plastisol out unless you're shooting it like molten lava hot. Oh, and one more number I almost forgot. When you're making your mold, extrude each half 15 millimeters. So easy way to do this is just do a symmetrical extrude at 15 millimeters. That's gonna end up a little over an inch and a half and should contain all of your lures, um, just about any size. Not many lures are over an inch and a half in any one direction. So if you musky guys always wanna print crazy stuff. Really, 15 millimeters is the minimum. Even if you have a thin lure, you wanna do it 15 millimeters because that's gonna give you 30 millimeters total, obviously. And that uh, gives you enough area around the injection port to not cause any warping or any weirdness. If I missed anything, guys, if you have a tip that I don't know about, please leave it in the comments. I don't think there's a ton of people on the planet Earth doing what we're trying to do here, and we all need to learn from each other. So drop a comment below.